Hello, my name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. So in this tutorial, I thought I would talk about UDEMS. I have been working on a project of mine for quite some time and I was using it very traditional kind of text stream methods. And then I decided recently to look into UDEMS because I had some issues that I was trying to solve. And I really like all of the things that I've learned about working with UDEMS and I thought that I would share this information with you guys while all of it is still very fresh in my head. Now, on that note, I do want to address something that has come up with some of my previous uh, tutorial videos where somebody will post something to the effect of like, ah, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about because, uh, you know, there's this other way that you can do this. And that comment, you know, has some validity. Uh, first of all, I always kind of state in my videos, I'm far from being an expert about this. I'm just like you guys. I'm just a creative filmmaker trying to solve some issues that I come across as I am working on my own stuff. Houdini being Houdini, there's usually like, I don't know, like 20 different ways of getting the same results. Um, and, you know, and in some ways are better, in some ways are worse. And, you know, like what I generally describe in my tutorials are ways and methods that work for me and for my own personal workflow, which might have their own strengths and also have their own weaknesses. As always, I'm very, very open to new ideas and new information. So if you guys have a more efficient way of accomplishing something, maybe uh, there's a single node that does the job that you know would normally take me like four different nodes, by all means, please let me know. I'm always interested in learning. I mean, that's what the comment section below is for. So please, if you have better ways of um, you know accomplishing some of the things that I talk about in my tutorials, please do let me know, as I'm always very interested. Okay, on that note, the next thing I want to say is that I think I'm going to split this tutorial into three separate videos. In this first video, I'm going to cover the you know what UDEMs are, like the philosophy, what, what issues they're trying to solve, and I'm also going to show you guys how to. Um, set up your UDEMs in Houdini in preparation for exporting to Substance Painter. So in the second video, we're going to dive into Substance Painter. We're going to import our model with the UDEM um, tiles, and I'm going to show you guys the workflow that I've learned um, as to how to manage UDEMs in Substance Painter. Then in the third video, we'll come back into Houdini. We'll kind of, you know, see a little bit what, what it is that we've created in Substance Painter. Uh, hit the render button, see what it looks like, make sure that everything has come across correctly. And also, I will offer you guys a couple of other alternatives of working with UDIMS after the fact in case that you want to fine tune some things and you're not really quite sure how to go about it. Okay, so on that note, let's dive in and talk about UDIMS. All right, so here we are in Houdini, and I thought that the first step to understanding what UDIMS are and what problems they solve is to kind of go back and take a look at regular good old UVs and see how they work and what their limitations are. So what I have here is this kind of like, a, I don't know, like sci-fi-ish piece of geometry, like some sort of weird canister. And what I've done is I ran a UV auto seam node to split up the geometry into some um, seams and then I ran like a UV flatten node to, you know, map it across our UV tile and we're using like a side effects labs visualize UVs to kind of get an idea of where the UVs are mapped on our geometry. So if, uh, if I hit like uh, the number five to go into UV mode, you'll see a little bit of how these two nodes have split up my geometry and kind of mapped it onto our standard UV square, okay? And this has, you know, certain pros and certain cons, but one of the limitations of this method is that basically when you go and texture like your model, you are limited to the resolution that this single UV square gives you, okay? Uh, now, it wasn't too long ago, believe it or not, that 1K resolutions for textures was kind of the norm, okay? I mean, I even remember when it was even s smaller than that, like 512, um, you know, bytes or whatever. The solution to this, you know, to this limitation that is kind of a resolution limitation is to just kind of make the texture file larger and larger, having higher and higher resolution. 
so that all of a sudden, like, you know, you don't have just a 1K square texture, like, you know, a JPEG or TIFF or EXR that is kind of covering all the pieces, parts of your model, but now you have like a 2K texture or a 4K texture. So um, let's discuss a little bit about what the limitations are of just increasing resolution. So let's say that you have a 4K texture and you know, it looks good on your model from far, but then as you start getting closer, it just kind of loses resolution. Things get a little bit pixelated or, you know, it looks a little soft. And so you want to work with a much higher resolution texture to begin with. And you're thinking, well, you know, maybe I should go to 8K, maybe I should go to 16K. So let's talk a little bit about like a 16K texture. So we have this 4K texture and we want to turn it into a 16K texture. So you might be tempted to think, oh, okay, 16K, 16K is just like four times bigger than that, right? I mean, it's just basically kind of four, 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 that's 16. Okay, I mean, that doesn't seem like such a big deal after all. Well, that's not necessarily true, actually. It's, it's actually definitely not true because a 16K texture is uh, basically like 16K on one side, but also 16K on the other side. So really and truly a 16K texture as compared to a 4K texture is not four times larger than a 4K texture, is actually 16 times larger than a 4K texture. And if you were to go to a 32K texture, now you're talking about a texture that is not 16 times, but actually 64 times larger than a 4K texture, if you can imagine that. So it gets exponentially larger. These files start getting enormous really, really quick. I mean, looking at our UV grid, you know, all of our pieces, parts of our geometry, all of the surface has been kind of neatly mapped onto this single square. But what if we could take this single square and split it up into multiple squares? Well, that's exactly what UDIMS is. It's just a way of organizing your pieces parts so that you can uh, basically access more than just a single grid, you know, and then, you know, however big that grid might be, if it's like 4K, if it's 8K or 2K or what have you, that's entirely up to you, but it's a much more efficient way of splitting up all your geometry and your surface over different um, UV tiles. So for this particular use of UDIM tiles, the workflow is pretty straightforward actually and relatively simple. So let me show you, let's go back to the UV flatten, okay? And I'm gonna switch back spacebar five to go back to our UV view. So what the UV flatten did is it took the auto seams that were generated from our UV auto seam node and used that to split up our surface of our object into a bunch of islands and these islands have been arranged on a single UV tile, okay? So now we're going to instance a UV layout node, okay? And the UV layout, the first thing that the UV layout is gonna try to do is to take all of these islands that were previously generated by the UV flatten and arrange them as neatly as possible to pack them as neatly as possible into a single UV square. However, we don't want to use the UV layout for this, we want to be able to generate UDIM tiles, so we want to be able to kind of spread our UV islands throughout several different tiles. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is under the packing section, we want to change it the scale from largest packable to fixed, okay? So what this is going to do is it's actually not going to necessarily rescale the individual UV islands to be as efficient as possible with this square, it's going to retain whatever the original size of the UV islands was from this UV flatten node. So now what that gives us is the ability to change this value, the, the scale value, where right now it's set to one, that means that the scale is not being altered, but if we want twice as much resolution for each one of our UV islands, we can simply change this number to two and now our UV islands are twice as large as what they were when the UV flattened, fed them into the UV layout node. You start noticing that there's some weird things going on where like, you know, this single square is packed and then we have like a whole bunch of other little UV islands kind of spread out all over the place. And this is most definitely not a UDIM tile layout. So what we wanna do is we also want to change the targets 
Right now it's default to pack into rectangles, but what we want to do is pack it into UDIM tiles. So we're going to switch that and right off the bat, now we have proper UDIM tiles. UDIM tiles typically start from this square right here and they move horizontally up until 10 squares and then they start another um, layer on top of it. So we'd be like one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth, all the way to the left until they reach 10 tiles and then start back here with tile 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on and so forth. And usually the numbering is 1000 plus whatever the tile number is. So this would be tile 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. You get the idea. Okay. So let's say that we want even more resolution. Maybe we want to go to three times as much resolution. So we just type three into our fixed scale. And now all of our UV islands have been resized to be three times as large as what they were in the UV flatten node. What if we go even larger than that? What if we want maximum resolution? Because I don't know, like we're gonna be like really crazy close up. We wanna maybe like, we start with our canister like kind of in the distance and then we're gonna go close, 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 close. And we get again, really, really microscopically close. So we want like a lot of resolution. So um, let's bump this number up to say five. Okay, so now we are enlarging every single UV island by five times. But now we have all these other pieces, parts here, and you're like, what is going on? Why aren't these pieces also being packed into here? Look at all the free spaces, and then we have like additional tiles that we could fill in. So the problem is that UDIM or UV layout in general doesn't really like to split up a single UV island into multiple tiles, okay? And that's what these guys are. These guys are all single UV islands that are now not fitting into a single tile because they're larger than that, okay? Because we have actually kind of enlarged them five times and now Houdini is kind of showing us and saying, hey man, these particular islands are so large that I cannot fit them into a single tile, so I'm just gonna put them aside. And that is a problem, because by putting them aside, they're now no longer part of our UDEM set. And even though I haven't really tested this, so I don't know, like maybe some programs understand and will map correctly, but for the most part, this looks like we're looking for trouble right here. So the best way to tackle trying to address these UV islands that will not fit onto a single UV tile is to resize them. And in order to resize them, we're gonna do this with the UV edit node, which we don't really need to instance because it's going to be instanced automatically. So let me show you how we can resize these particular elements. So I'm gonna go under my selection tool and I'm just gonna go through them and I'm just gonna double click on them and hold down shift and I'm just double clicking them to select them all. So now that I have all of these outlier islands selected, now I can hit my E key on the keyboard and that's gonna bring up the resize tool and it's also automatically going to generate a UV edit node. I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag this to resize all of them and I'm just gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna be a little bit conservative here. So I'm just gonna bring them down to here. That's almost like a 50% reduction. However, we are not done yet because now we need to remap them into a UDEM tile because remember right now they're still not sitting on the proper UDEM tiles. So for that, we're gonna need to bring another UV layout node, okay? So I'm just gonna go UV layout. So after adding this new UV layout, now once again, we're back to a single tile. It appears that we've just undone everything that we've done so far, but don't worry, we haven't. So now what we need to do is simply tell the UV layout once again that we're not interested in packing everything as neatly as possible into a single tile. We still want to use UDEMs, okay? And so we once again need to go under the packing section. We need to change the largest packable from, uh, I'm sorry, the scale from largest packable to fixed. And immediately this reopens everything. And uh, the next thing that we need to do is once again tell it don't pack it into rectangles, but pack it into UDEM tiles. 
and now we have back our UDEM tiles. The thing that we don't want to do is actually change the scale because remember the scale has already been changed for us by the first UV layout node. So on that note, let's go back to my uh, regular perspective view. Uh, we can attach the visualizer right here and kind of show you guys a little bit what, the, what this looks like. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can compare it to the previous UV layout where I was just enlarging the islands by three, three times and you'll see that the square on this guy are a lot larger which means that there's less resolution per island and with this guy we now have much more resolution per island which means that we're gonna have like a really really high resolution set of UDIMs to cover this particular canister. Okay, so having done that I'm just going to put in a null here, I'm just going to call it out. I'm going to make sure that the null has the visibility flag on it. Import export selections, I'm just going to select film box FBX and I'm going to uncheck this export in ASCII format and I'm just going to say dot FBX. So that's the name of our model with the UDIMs. Um, export current frame, that's fine because we don't have any animation. I'm just going to say export very specifically our geo, our geo node. Um, I guess we can create a root for subnet. I don't know if that really impacts anything when it comes to Substance Painter. Uh, I don't know if this conversion level of detail is important, but I always like to crank it up to five. I don't know. Higher seems better. Uh, I like to check this uh, converse memory at the expense of export time. And then uh, everything else kind of stays the same. And I'm just going to click export and it's just going to create this canister um, UFPX file that then we can import into Substance Painter. Okay, so now that I've talked about the first scenario in which you would want to use UDEMS to increase the resolution for your mesh uniformly, let me talk about another scenario that I've run into that UDEMS has allowed me to kind of solve some issues that I was having. So uh, this geometry is from a project that I've been working on. This is like a sci-fi proof of concept that I'm hoping to finish sometime this decade. Um, so what I have here is like this, uh, this model, this kind of spacecraft of sorts, and, um, and it's kind of made up of all these kind of different pieces, parts. So what I've done is I've assigned each one of these to its own separate material. And if we go and look under my material context, then you'll see that right now I have eight, nine, ten different materials for this one single piece of geometry, this, uh, this spacecraft. So this works. I mean, it does everything I need it to be. And the problem is that it starts getting messy, okay? Because I have like 10 different materials for this one single object right here. So let's say that all of a sudden I want to bring this into Blender. So now in Blender, I have to kind of transfer all of these textures that I have and each one of them has the fuse, roughness, metallic, height, you know, along with like some other adjustments. So now everything needs to be translate it into Blender. Or let's say that I want to bring this entire model into a larger scene that maybe contains other geometry because I want to animate it and, and so on and so forth. So now I have to go into Houdini and like, you know, copy and import stuff and it just starts getting really, really messy, especially as my other geometry is likely gonna have a whole bunch of materials assigned to it. So before you know it, like your material contest starts getting really, really crazy large and you might have like 30 or 40 different material builder nodes that you're trying to kind of figure out, oh, which one is what, what is going on and so on and so forth. So where UDEM can help is that we can actually split each one of these material into its own UDEM um, tile or more correctly, we're not like actually splitting the materials, we're actually splitting the geometry. So instead of each one of these pieces, parts of my craft having its own UV map and its own material assignment, maybe each one of these parts can be its own UDEM tile and then I can treat them as a, an entire set, okay? So instead of having, um, you know, 10 different materials, I can have one single material and, and maybe uh, this spacecraft has 
10 different UDEM tiles. And now all of a sudden, if I want to, you know, bring this material over to Blender, it's just like a one step process. I don't have to go and create 10 different uh, shader materials into Blender, or if I want to go into like, I don't know, Cinema 4D for whatever reason, or, you know, you get the idea. I'm actually going to be using this model right here, and this is like this kind of sci-fi-ish sort of fighter jet looking type of thing. This is a model that I purchased from ArtStation that was created by a very talented artist by the name of Mark Zhang. I'm going to post a link below because I should encourage you guys to check out some of his models and, and also some of his work that he has on ArtStation because the guy is really, really talented. Having said that, even though he's a very talented artist and modeler, uh, the models that you purchase from ArtStation are not what I would call plug and play into Houdini. So what I had to do first is I had to go into Blender because uh, I believe he models in Maya. So what you end up, if you just import the FBX files into Houdini, is like you end up with this massive node tree that can have like hundreds of different nodes, each one representing a single little piece of geometry. So what I did first is bring the model into Blender. So what I did in Blender is basically just kind of looked at this model and said, okay, you know, like, if I wanted to assign each one of these pieces parts its own UV island, which one would I do? Okay, so maybe like the wings, like both wings get like a UV island, maybe the fuselage, there's this turret up top, there's some flaps behind, maybe the engine, uh, maybe the gun, uh, cockpit, uh, the, the glass, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly what I did. I just combined all these various parts of the geometry into some groups, if you want to call it that, in uh, Blender that made sense to me. And then I brought that into um, Houdini as yet another, like a newer FBX file that was simplified. So if I show you my node tree, show you what I did like here I just have like the file import I'm writing like an attribute delete node because I don't want to use the original UVs uh, as they might have kind of changed a little bit as I was combining this geometry I want to be able to kind of start from scratch so I I'm basically deleting just about everything as far as point attributes vertex attributes uh, I'm deleting the shop material path but I am keeping this name attribute for the primitives because that's what's going to allow me to then split all these individual pieces of geometry by using a blast node later on as I'm about to show you. And detail attribute, there was just like this var map, I don't even know what it does exactly. But anyway, just kind of stripped away everything that I didn't need because as I said I want to start from scratch. I added some normals because I do want normals on my geometry and now I was able to use a blast node that referenced the name attribute. Remember, this is the attribute that I did not delete. And the name attribute comes from what I had named that particular combined group of geometry in Blender. Okay, so I was very careful to give it a name that would make sense to me later on in Houdini. So for instance, in this first blast node, uh, this is just the bombs and I'm, I have like here delete non-selected because basically I want the blast not to delete the thing that I'm selecting but everything else, okay, so that I can isolate it. Uh, so the first one has these kind of balls that I'm assuming maybe they're bombs. They're on the bottom, then there's another node that has the cockpit right here. I have another one that has the rear engine. Uh, this one has flaps. Then I have some... Uh, details on the bottom of the model, then I have my main fuselage, and so on and so forth. You get the idea, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to be able to run the same workflow that we did for our single canister, sci-fi canister that I just showed you, on each one of these groups. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's like, isn't there like an automatic way of doing this so that we don't have to do it on every single one of it? There is. There is by using the for each loop which unfortunately I'm not particularly familiar with. So that's the for each loop uh, methodology in Houdini is still a little bit intimidating to me. So I know that there's a more automatic way of doing this. I just don't know exactly how to do it. So maybe if you guys want to explain it to me, I am all ears. But let me show you what I did, which took a little bit longer, not as long as you think, but, uh, but you know, like still, it, it's a workflow that I was able to comfortably use. 
So starting with the bombs, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow exactly like the same uh, methodology that I used for the previous example. I'm just going to put an auto seam node right here and that's going to split up uh, my geometry and kind of cut some seams where they sort of make sense. And I'm just going to use a UV flatten. So what I want to do next is I want to instance a UV layout node because I want to be able to do this and use UDIMs, right? So um, UV layout, here we go. For this particular example, I'm not going to change the size. I'm, I'm gonna assume that a 4K uh, texture file for just the bombs, it's going to be adequate for my particular needs. Catch now is that we are going to change this from pack into rectangles to pack into UDIM tiles. And we're gonna change this little checkbox that before we left off because we were kind of like on autopilot but now we actually want to specify specifically in which UDEM tile I want these guys to reside so I'm just going to enable this and what this is going to do is it's going to place all of these um, islands into the very first UDEM tile 1001 okay so let's do the same thing with the second guy I'm just going to literally drag and copy this so now we have this cockpit okay so I'm just gonna connect it to the same node tree that we had so it's being split up with the seams and it's using the UV flatten to generate a um, UV map for us so I'm just gonna create a new UV layout node and going into the UV layout it's going to um, you know simply rearrange my geometry but once again I don't want to change necessarily the scale, but I do want to change this target from being packed into rectangles to being packed into UDEM tiles. And I do want to check the default UDEM box, except now I don't want it to reside onto the same UDEM tile that our bombs were using, okay? So the bombs were using UDEM tile 1001, 1001. So in this particular case, I want to move this to 1002, all right? So now we have the bombs on the first UDEM tile and the cockpit on the second UDEM tile. So let's keep going. Uh, this time I'm just going to like literally drag and copy everything and just connect the engine. Okay. And whoop. so now we are going to do the same thing with the engine and uh, we're just going to change this to 1003 and so on and so forth. I mean, we're going to do all of this for each one of these subgroups. So here we are. Uh, it, was, it really wasn't that time consuming at all. And as I said, I know that there's a way to automate this using the for each loops, but I don't know, I prefer to do it manually for my own personal sake. Uh, so I'm just running everything into a single merge node so I can see all of my tiles together. And you can see that by numbering each one of these UV layout uh, UDEM uh, tiles, it's by giving each one of them its own individual number. Now we have a nice, UDEM set where each one of these UDEM tiles actually matches a specific component of my geometry. So having done that, now I can just kind of add a null node, call it out just to be neat, go back to my object context and go into my file, do export, and once again we're going to export as FPX and uncheck the ASCII format because I really don't care about it. Uh, export current frame is fine. Uh, I'm just gonna point it to my interceptor geometry just to be safe. Uh, conserve memory, increase this to five. Uh, everything else can stay the same and that's it. I'm just gonna click export and we are done with 
setting up our model and preparing it for Substance Painter. Okay, so that concludes this first video where we've learned two different methodology of creating UDIM sets, uh, one for super high resolution on a single object and one using the UDIM tiles as individual pieces parts of our overall model. So in the next video, we're going to go into Substance Painter. We're going to bring these models in and I'm going to show you the workflow in Substance Painter. So you have a good idea on how to work with this UDEM sets into Substance Painter and be able to do the things that ultimately you want to be able to do. And then of course, in the third video, we'll come back into Houdini. We'll bring in these uh, texture sets that we created into Substance Painter and we'll hit the render button and see what happens and hopefully our desired result will appear as a render because that's ultimately the goal, right? So in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.